Ladies and gentlemen, Francis Atuli said something yesterday that caught my attention. That 2027 general election is a foregone conclusion. That William Ruto is easily going to retain his seat. And that nobody in Azimio can defeat Ruto. And personally, I strongly disagree with Francis Atuli. Because despite the fact that William Ruto shocked the entire country by defeating a combined force of Raila and Uhuru, Kenya Kwanza government, in my view, is one of the easiest governments to defeat in the 2027 general election. So I want you guys to pay very close attention to what Francis Atoli is trying to suggest here. Because in this video, I want to explain two things. The first thing I want to explain is why Atoli believes that Ruto will easily win in 2027. And then I'm going to give you my reasons why I strongly believe that Kenya Kwanza is going to lose the elections. I'm not saying they're going to lose. I'm just saying they can easily lose that election if Azimio were to strategize properly. Listen in to Atoli before we proceed now. From him as a grantor of another business. And let me tell you, Sisi Waluya to Meamua, Your Excellency. I know Sisi to Likueka Kando. Uka toka Kando, Uka Pita Kwa Sisi about Likuana President. 2027, Itaenda Sisi Tunaweza Wewe Na Mdagani. So the only answer, Vila Taka Kwa Bia Watu Wetu, Mambo ya Election ya 2027, Uko Tumetoka Uko. Mambo ya maandamano, wacha ni yongei kidogo yu excellence, uh, 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 speak of national assembly. Mambo ya maandamano, ni ya watu hawane ufisi. Wale watu walikuwa kwa azimio, wakina Dr. Tuoma, Franza, Tuoli, Governor Wavihiga, and the rest of our walikuwa na ufisi, wakati election ilikuisha tulirutu kwa ufisi. Wale wako kwa mambo ya maandamano, kadonzo msioka hane ufisi. Mada karua hane ufisi. Honorable Amali wa ndugu yetu hapa hana ofisi. Eh? Raila mwenyewe hana ofisi. Eh? Wila anaitwa Oparanya from my home has no office. So hiyo andamano mwajeo watu wasio na ofisi. Wale wako na ofisi warudi kwa ofisi wafanya kazi. We excellent we support you. We are steadfast. But I want to want also to add a little bit. <laughs> Sawa! Sawa! So, so, kitu nataka kuongeza kidogo, Your Excellency. When you were in Geneva, you spoke about issues concerning this continent related to economic and financial fairness. Don't abandon that subject. It gave you a name internationally. Everywhere I go, they know your name now everywhere. Even in German, I was being asked about you. Stand up for the rights of this continent as you did. You are young, fight. People are there under international organizations such as those ones that we serve. We will continue supporting you. May God bless you. Now that's Francis Atoli. And by the way, ahead of the last general election, I used to tell a friend of mine on this platform. He knows himself. He was a key player in uh, Kenya Kwanzaa and UDA party, I used to tell him that of all lawyer leaders who are defecting from Azimio at, the, at, the, at that particular time, the only individual whose defection was going to have biggest impact on Raila Mulodinga was going to be that of Francis Atoli. And of course, after the election, Atoli then shifted to Kenya Kwanzaa. So I know the impact the defection of Atoli has on the politics of Raila Odinga. Because remember, Atoli used to organize lawyer leaders for Raila Odinga. His home used to host some of these major meetings. But let us not get into that for now. I want to explain to you guys why Atuli believes very so shortly that Ruto will easily win. He's, he's basing his judgment on, oh, number one, the deep state. That Ruto managed to win against Raila and Uhuru as an outsider. Because remember, Uhuru was the president. Raila Odinga was the main opposition leader. They were, in the last election in 2017, they were the candidates. But William Ruto came from nowhere and home. 
The truth of the matter is that Uhuru Kenyatta never really took control of the deep state. William Ruto was able to control deep state because of several other factors. One of the factors is that Daniel Moy ruled the country for 24 good years. By the time Moy left, he had left Kalijins in strategic positions in government. What William Ruto is currently doing. And because of that, William Ruto was able to gain access to the right information within government. And of course, William Ruto having served as a deputy president very close to, to William Ruto, I mean to Uru Kenyatta, and being uh, that guy, he was able to really maneuver his ways. So I doubt that that's going to give him more advantage because despite that, William Ruto was still able to have only a difference of 20,000. Number two, I truly also believe that uh, power attracts people. And therefore, because William Ruto is the president, more people are definitely going to be attracted to Ruto. Of course, that's true. Power attracts people. If Raila Odinga were to be the president of the Republic of Kenya today, I am sure someone like Evans Kedero would be with Raila Odinga. I am sure someone like Atuli would be calling shots in, in uh, Raila Odinga's government. I am sure all those people who, have, who are joining William Ruto would have joined Raila Odinga. But the biggest question is what value are they bringing? You might have people defective, but they don't have any value. So that's his second thought. Number three, why he believes this, is that Azimio was disorganized during the last election. And therefore that disorganization is still going to creep in. On that, probably, I agree with him to some extent. And lastly, he also believes so because Atuli totally believes that lawyer factor is going to be a key player in the 2027 election. And the fact that Wetangula is now the majority, I mean, the Speaker of the National Assembly, the fact that Mudavadi is the, is the Chief Prime Secretary or Prime Cabinet Secretary, the fact that now they have the, the, the Chief, the, I mean, the Central Bank Governor, also the DPP, that now the lawyers are going to follow William Ruto. The truth of the matter is that for lawyers, it's not easy to predict. They've always, they've always voted with or for Raila Amolo Dinga, though I know William Ruto is really trying. But why do I strongly believe that Atuli is actually wrong to believe that the 2027 election is already decided? Before we get into all those details, before I give you my own thoughts, in case you are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to also thank anybody who saw it fit to send me coffee. And you can also do the same using the numbers on your screens because it goes a long way in helping me produce more content. Ladies and gentlemen, why do I strongly believe that Kenya Kwanzaa is one of the easiest government to defeat? But that defeat will only depend on Azimio, their formation, and their strategy. Why do I believe so? Number one, I'm 100% sure that Azimio Lamoya One Kenya Alliance learned their lessons in the last election. In fact, I was talking to someone who was critical in the last campaign. And he told me, Lee, if we had listened to certain things, if we had not taken certain things for granted, if we had not banked fully on uh, the deep state, then the results of the elections would have been different. So it means most of them are in agreement that Azimio slept on the job. And because Azimio learned their lessons, there is no way, I can assure you, it will be business as usual. You know, William Ruto planned for this election from the beginning till the end. And he succeeded. But he was an outsider. The fact that he came as an outsider and won also means that Azimio can also come as an outsider and win. Because Kenyan politics is very interesting by nature. Kenyans like people who are viewed as underdog. William Ruto was viewed as underdog. And that's why sometimes I hope that Azimio could actually get a candidate who is viewed as an underdog. So the fact that Azimio has learned their lesson 
means that they'll be able to do certain things differently. Number two, change of strategy. As Mio needs to change their strategy, if they can change their strategy, they can easily win. Where change of strategy can mean even changing the candidate. Because politics is a game of numbers, perceived or real. Those are the facts. Perceived numbers or real numbers. As Mio must sit down and figure out, do we really need Kalonzo as the presidential candidate? Do we really need Martha Karwa as the presidential candidate? Do we really need Raleigh Odinga as the presidential candidate? And who can add the numbers? Who is going to be our running mate? And where are our strongholds? What can we do to convince our strongholds to turn out in large numbers? In fact, most people believe that if Azimio had just upped their game in Nyanza alone, they would have bridged the 200,000 gap easily because the turnout in Nyanza was low. In fact, someone was telling me that Homer Bay alone was enough because we are not ensured that his strongholds were high. Then you look at the numbers in Ukambani. Why were they low? So if Azimio can come up with a good strategy, good candidate, they will easily defeat Kenya Kwanza. I'm sure, 100% sure, that William Ruto would not be able to generate the kind of euphoria using the hustler and dynasty narrative the way he did. The third reason why I strongly believe that Azimio can easily defeat William Ruto is two in one. The narrative and the lies. Do you think William Ruto can promise Kenyans any other new thing? Of course, nowadays he's still promising certain things, but Kenyans are laughing. Which means, if it's about the narrative of dynasty, that is, he can't use it again. There is now nothing William Ruto will continue promising Kenyans that if I take over, we are going to create jobs, we are going to give Mamamboga watch. He's not going to do that. So which means he doesn't have a narrative. So Azimio can come up with a narrative and run with it. They can come up with a euphoria and run with it. They can clearly expose William Ruto's lies. In fact, have you ever asked yourself why William Ruto is currently outside their campaigning? Have you ever asked yourself? Ruto is outside their campaigning because of one thing. The fear of losing the ground. So that's number, number, no, that's number, three. number four, the revenge mission. There are people in government who are part of the deep state who joked with the power. They thought they were undermining Raila Odinga or they were undermining Uhuru Kenyatta. They didn't know that they were actually undermining themselves. Most of these people are saving for the day. So they can gang up against Ruto. I am sure, for example, that someone like Uru Kenyatta has serious bones to chew with William Ruto again. So for me, because of revenge, if Azimio will be able to bring, some of them fear, but if Azimio will be able to bring them, because Ruto is already destroying them. You saw what happened to Rai the other day when he was kidnapped. Two days, he was released. No government is speaking about that. It's just like, you know, a, 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 a serious Kenyan being abducted in broad daylight. The president speaks about it. Nobody is taking action. So that revenge mission, some of these guys will pump their money. Just like the individuals who pump their money on Ruto's campaign because of the way they were frustrated by Uru Kenyatta, people like, Humph by Uru Kenyatta, people like Humphrey Kariuki, people like Keroche. Number four, or is it number five now? Is Mount Kenya factor. If Azimio can come with a strategy for Mount Kenya, because the fact is, I think William Ruto reached the maximum in Mount Kenya. He can no longer get more than he got there. And of course, William Ruto is not going to lose Mount Kenya in 2027. But what strategy can Azimio use to suppress their vote, turn out, and probably to maintain what they got? Because Azimio got over 1.4 million votes in Mount Kenya, which for me was a huge success for them. So I think Mount Kenya, if Azimio can come up with a good strategy of retaining those their 1.4 million votes, because sometimes I strongly feel that 
those who voted for Raila Odinga in Mount Kenya will still vote for him again and again and again. <laughs> the other reason why Kenya Kwanzaa will definitely lose is their failure. Is there any single pro project which will have promised Kenya, which has promised? He was in Mount Kenya, he launched all projects. He was in Western, he launched all projects. He was in uh, Kisi, all projects. Nothing, any, no single Kenya Kwanzaa project. He will be able to do this, but what are the impact? For example, if you go to Busia or Bungoma and launch a, hotel, a hospital, which has been there, without any other thing. So because of Kenya Kwanzaa, and because of unfulfilled promises, because they promise so many people so many things. And lastly, I also tend to think that as we move forward, there's definitely going to be some kind of fallout in Kenya Kwanzaa. Some people are going to feel that they were betrayed. Some people are going to feel that, you know, they're being forced to do certain things. I'm not saying, but in case a fallout is going to emerge in Kenya Kwanzaa over certain disagreements, I'm looking at Rigadi versus Mudavadi War. I'm looking at Ndindi Nyoro versus uh, Rigadi Gashagwa or Rigadi Gashagwa versus Kimani Ishungwa. I don't know what to think. That's my take. Thank you guys and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.